All right, video time. Today, I'm gonna show you how to put together version 1.1 of this C-Max bus bar kit that we have. It changed a little bit. The parts changed the way you assembled them. And this allows us to make this kit a lot uh, less costly and so it's going to allow us to lower the price but yet still give you a kit that is really really easy for you to install without you having to take apart this module and reconfigure yourselves so we're going to put it together here are all the parts that you get and we're also offering this already put together as a plug and play so we do all this work that you're going to see us do right here you can just order it already made and then you just connect your cables and then it's ready to use but for those who are going to buy the kit because either they want to build it themselves or because they bought the cells or the battery module somewhere else. If you already have it, you could just buy the kit and then just install it into your module. Then this video is going to be really helpful for you. Okay, so step one, you have to make sure you have everything. There's going to be 10 of these screws, five, and then there's five, and then you're going to get 10 of these standoffs and then 20 of these uh, nuts. So there's 10 here and then there's 10 here. So there's a total of uh, 40 of these nuts and then the two bus bars straight ones that go like this the pcb and then this big bus bar right here and then the two terminals and these are available in two variants two different form factors this one's right here you will be able to use with like ring terminals this is going to be cheaper option because then you just crimp your cables or you can get them with these terminal blocks that have uh, that don't require you to crimp anything with the cable you just peel it and then put it in there and then tight so the same parts work for both these are identical parts so you're gonna have to choose when you buy this kit you can choose either the ring terminal version or the block uh, version right so after you figure that you have all the parts, the second thing to do is to prepare the module. What you'll have to do, take the tape off here and then break off all of these plastic little things that are there. So let's do that now. Wow, did that good? You know, I think I'll twist it. Yeah. Okay, now that that is prepared, the first thing is this isolator. We're gonna put this in here. There's no risk of stuff touching the cells okay after you do that now what we need to do is make sure that this module is facing the right way you have to have the positives away from you on top because the other way it would be the negatives right so once you have the positives we'll start from the left here and then we'll go this way so on the right there will be one cell that is going to be left unused so you will start by putting your bus bars uh, starting from here, from the left to the right. So you're gonna start to put the first bus bar here. This is this big one right here, and you can skip one cell. So you're gonna start by the first negative, and then you line it all the way up. And then install it there. And then on this side, you're gonna have two cells that are left over. So after you do that, then you can put the nuts on here. Okay, and these nuts are 12 point nuts and what you will need is gonna be this 12 e-torque socket. Okay, so just torque them between eight or nine, uh, what is this, newton meters? Newton meters. Newton meters. And when you're doing this, make sure you leave the, the ones in the center off because you're gonna have to undo them to put this, this uh, PCB in here. So after you do that, I guess it would be useful to put the nuts in here. On these ones right here, you're gonna have to put a nut. And then after you torque it, then you're gonna use these standoffs. You'll need that to gain the right amount of height that, you, that we need. So first install the, the nuts and then tighten them. And then you, you put this. So the ones in the middle here, you leave them off after you put the the PCB, then we'll put those also. Next step, you're gonna put the standoffs on those. This. Next step is to put these, and you go right on the edge there. Now be careful, because now you could short these out if you go too far here. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Make sure you, you don't go past here because if you put this in here, this would short out like crazy. 
So then you put the second one in there. There we go. Now you can put your nuts and then tighten them. No, wait, not that one. Oh, not those. Oh yeah, that's right. This one over here. On these is the same thing. You leave these four on the center open so that you can put the, BM, the, the board. So next step is to put the board. And the way you know that you're doing this right is if you have a, a positive there and that's labeled as positive and then you have a negative there that's labeled as negative. And then once you do that, you could put these nuts now here. And then these, this one's are gonna go like this one. These little loose cables go right on the front there and then you put a nut on it right there. Yeah, no. So now you can go and tighten all the bolts at this point and all the standoffs if you haven't tightened them already. Okay, so after you have everything tightened, bolt it down and tighten. Now the last thing is to put your, your terminals. And you're gonna do that by screwing those in top of these standoffs there. Now be careful, because if you drop it in here, there's gonna be a big short. So you got to yeah. make sure that you don't this do one. that. You put those screws in there, tighten them up. Maybe you don't let it go until you tighten the first one kind of thing. All right, and then we do the same on the other side. It'll just be like a pressure washer. So now that everything is installed there, now you have module set up. Now this one is gonna look different. You're either gonna go with, you know, both sides of these with blocks or both sides with bolts, right? So you can use ring terminals. So whichever side you go, both are gonna look the same. But in this case, we built one with one of each so that you can see how each one looks like. So then the next step is just to use our recommended balancer. You could use any balancer in here. All the balancers that have uh, four cells in series will have five cables. This one right here can do anywhere from two cells all the way to eight cells. So that's why it's got this many connectors, right? Or this many pins on the connector, but you literally only need five. And that's why this right here has only five. So when you're gonna connect your, your balancer, you have to refer back to the diagram for your balancer, right? Like we haven't used a lot of those, so we don't know how so a lot of those work, but it's, they all should have a, a, a diagram showing you how to connect it. Now, for us to make it easy, we just went with this one because this one has a screen and it tells you what the status of your battery is without having to guess or having a have a multimeter and all this stuff, right? So it's very easy. You just connect it in there. And if it doesn't work at first, it's because you're putting it backwards. Now, don't worry. It's no big deal. It won't burn it up or anything. You just have to flip it around. It goes over and, here on this side. Yeah. So you have to start on the side that has the negative. And the negative is, is labeled over here as negative. So here we go. Here's our battery here. We literally picked this battery up randomly from our pallet. So it is at 3.4 volts, 13.83. Uh, this would be perfect to install in a car right now. And then it will the car would charge it up uh and the cells are very very balanced with only 16 millivolts of unbalance so this is how you want your module to look if for some reason you have your module and it's a bit out of balance then all you have to do uh is you know you have to make sure that you set up this as a lithium as a lipo 4s right and then once you have that on there you could just click on this button the center one and then you start the balancing and when it's green like that and you have red and black it's balancing your your cells so this will get even closer than the 16 17 millivolts that it's currently at now 16 16 millivolts is nothing you could just leave it it is like that and obviously these will not show their their differences in voltage in the middle which is where they're at they would show it like a really bottom of the curve or at the very top right when they're fully almost fully discharged or almost fully charged so you would want to uh, balance these after it's fully charged if you see any discrepancies if you see any of these the, of the group cells drifting apart then you you click the, the the balancing thing and then you leave it there 
it might take if it, if your pack is uh you know like grossly misbalanced then it's gonna take a long time maybe like days for this to balance it but you just leave it on and eventually next time you come in and then you start your car up and you charge it up then uh you just keep doing it if it doesn't if the one session doesn't work you just keep doing it and keep doing it until eventually it will burn all that energy from the cells that are high right and then it'll be balanced so you you know your 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 pack is balanced if it's balanced at the very top when it's fully charged or fully discharged in the middle it's always it's almost always going to show balance even though it's not perfectly balanced right so that's how balancing works and that's why we like this one because it shows you where you're at and it shows you what your little balancer is doing you could use the hall tech you could use all those other ones right but they're not as good you're always in the dark you don't know what you're you know they're they're they, they're faster at balancing but you don't know if they're working if you don't take out like a multimeter and you're checking them and you're checking them after a few hours you, you know if you don't babysit them basically uh you never know and with this one you could just know if it's balanced or if it's not balanced if it needs to be balanced or it doesn't need to be balanced uh, by the way, after this balances, it'll turn itself off. The balancing feature, the, the thing will remain on. Uh, and if you, you could just leave it there. Uh, and then whenever you check it again in the future, if, if you see that it's going on balance, then you just click the center again here. Like I just turned it off there and I just turn it back on. So you just click that button and then restart the balancing procedure again, right? So this will stay on until it's fully balanced. And then after that, you just connect. You can, if you don't want to crimp cables and put uh, uh, ring terminals on your cables, then go for the blocks. You put them in here. There's three of them here that will go up to uh, zero gauge, I think. Mm -hmm. That's what these are rated. Depending on the quality of your cable, it will dictate which ones will fit in here. I know that I put up to two odd cable in here but i have really high quality welding cable and those tend to be really skinny compared to all the crappy car audio cables that are out there right so, so the the cheaper the material that you're using the the, uh, the copper then the bigger the diameter has to be to be able to handle the current right so if you use like a really low quality cable then it's going to be really fat and you won't be able to put like zero gauge in here but if you're using high quality cable then that you have no problem putting all two two odd in here. Now, also, if you don't, the best connection is really a ring terminal crimped in there and put it in here, right? So if you're running a system that is high performance and stuff, you might want to think about using a ring terminals and then just put them in here and, and and screw them in there. But you know, I know that the audio world is kind of likes these things, and you might already have your cables ready to go, and they're just you know, yeah, this is the easiest way, definitely, and I think that's what they do it. So there you go. This is the new version 1.1. So this pack right here is 125 amp hour, 14.8 volt C-Max battery module. And you can charge it all the way to the 14.8 is the nominal voltage and it goes all the way up to 16 volts. So you might wanna set your car up to charge up to 16. Now, don't ask us how you do that because there's probably a bunch of ways and we don't know how to do that. We know how to make batteries. Uh, you would have to refer to people in the community that know how to, how to do that with these. Uh, how to do alternators, how to modify them so that they can up the voltage on them and stuff. Yeah, we've never gotten into that stuff. You could ask us all kinds of questions about these batteries. We're ready to answer any of those, right? But how to work on your car and how to work on your thing, yeah. We don't have the experience to, to advise you on how to implement this on your car right so there's a bunch of communities online there's a bunch of groups that are using this we didn't come up with this these are very popular in the the diy audio world and so we're just making it easy for you to use these without having to modify them what people are having to do in the past is that they modify these they take them apart they rearrange them and stuff they make like really really expensive bus bars that are like oversized overweight because they don't know what they're doing now here is a no-nonsense affordable bus bar system that it's really easy to install you saw us it took us only like five minutes to put this together and then uh really affordable now the way with the parts that we're using so also if you are first time and you don't want to you know figure out how to do all this stuff you could just order this already the way it is you know already put together as a plug and play go to jack35.com and then you could buy the module 
or the bus bars separate, do the work yourself, or just buy this whole thing put together, plug and play, and then you just install it.